Right, today we're going to have a go at um, making a bleed kit if you haven't got one because I know a lot of people don't have bleed kits. So we're going to have a go at making a bleed kit for a break um, just with bits and bobs. So we're going to take through our break here and we're going to bleed that uh, with some mineral oil. The video I showed you before bleeding with LHM uh, mineral oil. So we'll do the same with this one. We'll bleed that with mineral oil. Um, but we're going to try and do it by making a bleed kit instead of actually um, using a bleed kit you can buy. Um, so we'll put the first, we'll put the brake into the voice here. Obviously, you'll probably be doing this on the bike. Um, I'll do it here on the voice, make it easy to see. So I'm going to hold that in the voice. Good thing about it being on, on the bike is that the lever is higher than the um, than the caliper, so the air will naturally go up the pipe when you try and bleed it anyway. So what we're going to try and use is this pot. It's just a squeezy pot. Um, Camry Rock Shocks uh, reverb oil in it to do the stealth reverb drop posts. It's squeezy. It's got to be squeezy, and it's got to have a lid that fits tight. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop an hole through the top of there. We are going to cut a press the valve off an old inner tube. We're going to push it through that hole, and we're going to put a piece of pipe like that, which you can get from hardware stores or um, place I've bought it from in the past is like uh, pet shops, aquatic shops, same sort of stuff that they use the air pipes on the filters and things, and we're going to. Take the end out of there, we're going to push that over and then we should be able to push that onto the bleed nipple of the brake and see if we can squeeze the fluid through it like that without putting air in there. So I'll get some cutters, we'll cut that off and we'll get a hole in there. I'm, I'm just going to use things you'll have at home if you haven't got drills and stuff like that. We'll just pop a screwdriver through. So we'll do that. So we're going to start off putting a hole into this pot, start off with a small screwdriver to get it through there and this is going to be hard to get through the top of that so what we're going to do is um, we're going to warm it up. So if we get a lighter and just warm the end of it up with a lighter, get it nice and hot. Normally I just chuck a drill through this, just doing it so you can do it at home if you haven't got drills. and. Stuff like that, you just got screwdrivers and things. Should have got a screwdriver and a lighter. So, first of all, warm this up. And then push it through the top of there, and it'll go through nice and easy. That's through nice and easy. So, now what we want to do is we want to um, get another hole in there, but we don't want it any bigger than this valve. So Try and pick something that's around the same size as that because you need that to seal into the lid there. So um, I've got this screwdriver. I might go and get a slightly smaller one actually. So that's a thinner one. I didn't want to go straight off the bat into something too big. So we'll warm this one up, pop this one through. Just a minute on here and warm it up. I mean, you could. Just push it through like this, I would have thought, but it's nice to get a nice clean hole, make it easy to get it through. Not too, too, too long, it'll burn your fingers, so be careful. Normally, if I'm eating stuff up, I'd use the blowtorch. That should be warm enough. There we go, it's gone through nice and easy. Um, so what we'll do now is just to check the size, we'll cut the top. Just get this pointing a bit closer. We'll cut the valve off there. What we want to do is leave a bit of rubber around the, around the bottom of it so it will seal. So we'll just cut cut around it, you can do this as a standing knife, scissors, or whatever, it's just rubber, it'll come off quite easily. 
What you need to make sure when you finish your holding the tube, which I haven't got on this one, is that you have got um, a locking ring, because you're going to need that. So let's take the lid off here and see if it's the right size. And if you've got to screw it through, then all the better, because it's a nice fitting. Looks like it is going to go through. I might have to go a little bit bigger on the hole. So that's got a plastic cap in there as you can see. But yeah, we're going to have to go a little bit bigger on the hole. So we'll get back to the original screwdriver and I'll push that through. Put a little bit of heat on this one. It's going to take a bit longer to wait up when you're because it'll be fatter. Obviously it takes a while to make this in the first place but once you've made it then it's easy to bleed your brakes from then on. Nice and warm. There we go, it's through quite easy. Let's go again with the valve. I'm very close to getting that through. Try and open the hole up a little bit more. And it's still tight, which is what we want. There we go, that's going through now. You can see it's coming out. Just wind it in there. Then what we want to do, after we've wound it all the way, all the way in, is put the locking ring on. So we'll go and grab a locking ring, normally you've got one on there, but this has obviously been a whole tube, it's been took off at some stage, um, but I'll get the locking ring on and we'll put it on there. Right, so we've got the locking ring which comes on the tube normally, just screw that on there and what we want to do is make sure that's down nice and tight because we need this to make a seal inside here. So let's get some pliers and screw that down nice and tight. It is obviously going to stop turning at some point. And then what we want to do is these particular inner tubes you can take this upper part out so this part at the top here that will come out so I'll just grab it two flats with the pliers and that's it and then what you've got there is a straight tube so that comes all the way out and that will lead straight to the bottom and you can see you can just see through that look um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Grab this with the pliers and another set of pliers and tighten that down. So grab that with the pliers, and I just want to make sure that this lock ring is nice and tight. So we'll just tighten it down. Don't worry about any of these threads because you're not going to use them. So that seems to be nice and tight there. Yep. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to fill this bottle with hydraulic fluid, mineral oil, whatever you're going to use, dot four, whatever your brakes are. I'm going to screw that on there, and then we're going to use that squeeze to squeeze the fluid into the brake. So we've got our piece of pipe here. 
Might need to warm this up to get it over, but there we go. That's screwed on there nice and tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can bleed this brake with it. First time I've done it, I've never done this before, I just thought I'd give it a go. What we're gonna do now is fill the bottle with our LHM. I wanna fill it to the top to reduce how much air is in there. And we'll see if this works. So we've got a bleed nipple there. This brake's got next to nothing in it. We'll open the bleed nipple, there's a bit of fluid coming out there. And then what we'll do is pop this here, push the fluid through there, it should come out of here. Let's see if we can get it. To sit somewhere. Just placed the lever over there so you can see the fluid coming out of it. These use a Torx. If you haven't got a Torx, you can use 2.5, I think this is. It'll go in there. Just gently, gently undo it. So, mum's the truth. We've got the bottle there. I'm going to give it a squeeze onto the cloth. Get the air out. I'll we'll come over and pop it on to the bleed nipple. The air's come to the top. And we'll give it a squeeze and see if it comes out of there. Which it does. So we get, make sure there's no bubbles. Once the bubbles stop and we've got clear fluid, just keep it squeezed. Then we will close the blade nipple like that. Pop it off. Now we'll put this back in. I think I needed my lid a little bit tighter on my uh, squeezy bottom. It's not got much thread on it, it's not the best bottle to do it with. You can find something with a bit more thread. It should look better. Now we'll test it. Okay, so now we're just gonna give the brake a test. Get some of that off. This is an old brake that I'm just drawing it with, that's why the pads are still in there. I wouldn't normally do it with the pads in. So we'll get the brake in there. Let's just loosen that up. Give it a pull and it works perfect. So that has done the job. As you can see. So that's a way to bleed your brakes using some stuff that you've got at home without using a bleed kit. Obviously you can push a bit more through, get a, make sure all the air's out of there. It's easier if your brake is, uh, your lever is higher, which mine wasn't, than <laughs> your caliber, because the air will sort of naturally go to the top. Um, but it's working um, it's done the job if I was going to do it for longer I'd just uh, put the brake up and make sure all the air was coming out but it has worked like I said top could do with being a bit tighter on there but there's nothing coming from around there all I'd got was a bit of leakage from out there um, but yeah it's worked well if you want more videos on bikes, cars, fixing stuff, um, please subscribe and like the video. Thank you.